Hello everyone, I'm Kamira Tony, and welcome to today's webinar, which is hosted by the Clean Energy Solutions Center in partnership with Lighting Global. Today's webinar is focused on the PAYGO Market Attractiveness Index 2019. Before we begin, I'll quickly go over some of the webinar features. For audio, you have two options. You may either listen through your computer or over your telephone. If you choose to listen through your computer, please select the mic and speakers option in the audio pane. Doing so will eliminate the possibility of feedback and echo. If you choose to dial in by phone, please select the telephone option and a box on the right side will display the telephone number and audio pin you should use to dial in. If anyone is having difficulties with the webinar, you may contact the GoToWebinars Help Desk at 888-259-3826 for assistance. If you'd like to ask a question, we ask that you use the questions pane where you may type in your question. The audio recording and presentation will be posted to the Solutions Center training page within a few days of the broadcast and will be added to the Solutions Center YouTube channel where you will find other informative webinars, as well as video interviews with thought leaders on clean energy policy topics. Finally, one important note of mention before we begin our presentation is that the Clean Energy Solutions Center does not endorse or recommend specific products or services. Information provided in this webinar is, a featured, is featured in the Solutions Center's resource library as one of many best practice resources reviewed and selected by technical experts. Today's webinar agenda is centered around the presentation from our guest panelists, Ed Day, Caroline Smith, and Itatia, who have joined us today to discuss how to use Lighting, lighting Global's Pay-As-You-Go Market Attractiveness Index. Before we jump into presentation, I will go provide a quick overview of the Clean Energy Solutions Center. Then, following the panelists' presentation, we will have a question and answer session where the panelists will address questions submitted by the audience. At the end of the webinar, you will be automatically prompted to fill out a brief survey as well. So thank you in advance for taking a moment to respond. The Clean the Solutions Center was launched in 2011 under the Clean Energy Ministerial. The Clean Energy Ministerial is a high-level global forum to promote policies and programs that advance clean energy technology to share lessons learned and best practices and to encourage the transition to a global clean energy economy. 24 countries and the European Commission are members, contributing 90% of clean energy investment and responsible for 75% of global greenhouse gas emissions. This webinar is provided by the Clean Energy Solutions Center, which is an initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial. The Solutions Center focuses on helping government policy design and adopt policies and programs that support the deployment of clean energy technologies. This is accomplished through access to no cost expert policy assistance and capacity building activities such as this webinar. The Clean Energy Solutions Center is a co-sponsored by the government of Australia and the United States. The Solutions Center provides several clean energy policy programs and services, including a team of over 60 global experts that can provide remote and in-person technical assistance to governments and government-supported institutions, no-cost virtual webinar trainings on a variety of clean energy topics, partnership building with development agencies and regional and global organizations to deliver support, an online library containing over 3,500 clean energy policy-related publications, tools, videos, and other resources. Our primary audience is made up of energy policymakers and analysts from government and technical organization in all countries. But we also strive to engage with the private sector, NGOs, and civil society. The Solution Center is an international initiative that works with more than 35 international partners across a suite of different programs. Several of the partners are listed above and, included, and include research organizations like IRENA and the IEA programs like C4ALL and regionally focused entities such as ECOWAS Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. 
A marquee feature that the solution center provides is the no cost expert policy assistance known as the Ask an Expert. The Ask an Expert service matches policymakers with one of more than 60 global experts selected as authoritative leaders on specific clean energy finance and policy topics. Again, this assistance is provided free of charge. So if you have a question for our experts, please submit it through our simple online form at cleanenergysolutions.org forward slash expert. We also invite you to spread the word about the service to those in your network and organization. Now I'd like to provide a brief introduction for today's panelists. First up is Ed Day. Ed has a decades ex experience in economic advisory services, including long and short-term assignments across Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. His focus at Vivid has been on the development of innovative energy access business models and how these can be financed and the benefits of improved energy access to recipients. In addition, he has led the development of the 2018 PAYGO market attractiveness, as well as this, as well as this 2019 updated version. Following um, is Caroline Seth. Caroline has over seven years of experience working on sustainable energy and infrastructure projects. Her energy access work includes studies for gold, Standard Foundation reports on new metrics to capture the full range of impacts of energy services in the distributed economy in Africa, and has also worked in international case studies um, in Bangladesh. Caroline also has led a uh, focus on Asian markets in the 2019 Pago Market Attractiveness Index. And our final speaker is Itotia. Itotia is an international finance corporation lighting global program manager with more than 25 years experience in business development. Lighting Global, a joint IFC and WB program provides support to the private sector and government in building sustainable markets for affordable modern off-grid lighting products for unelectrified communities. And with those introductions, I would like to welcome Itotia to the webinar. So thank you, Kamir, and uh, thank you to the Clean Energy Solutions Center for facilitating this, uh, uh, this webinar today. Uh, again, we deeply appreciate the fact that it's really early morning for you, uh, but uh, a very good evening to the people calling in from Asia, good afternoon for the people calling in from uh, Europe and Africa, and good morning for those ones who are in the Americas. So welcome to this webinar, and uh, I think one of the good is just to take a couple of moments uh, to provide an outline of uh, how we thought about this uh, PAYGO market attractiveness index that's specifically targeted at PAYGO. And that's because sometime around 2017, 2018, especially when uh, after the Hong Kong conference, it became clear that um, the PAYGO companies were largely focusing on the East African market. And uh, when we got to talk to these companies and try and get a sense of uh, why are they really concentrated in East Africa, at that time I think they were close to 80% of their sales, and uh, both sales and revenue, when this particular geography. And I think what we got is a sense of, uh, yes, the market was attractive for, for a host of reasons. Uh, at the same time, the, the data that they needed was readily available. Uh, and we thought that, uh, yeah, this could be an opportunity for us to address a couple of issues. One is, as I said, the concentration one. And then secondly, PAYGO is a slightly different model. Yeah? It's, a, it's a combination of multiple things. It's a combination of, um, of uh, hardware, software, distribution, finance, all rolled into one. And so when you're really looking and trying to assess the market, you need to assess it from those uh, four or five uh, standpoints. And so you can relate to the fact that uh, that it becomes very expensive because then you have very many constituents that are looking at, um, at a market and it has uh, multiple points uh, of, of looking at it. At the same time, um, the PAYGO was also undergoing an evolution. It started as a very vertically integrated model, but uh, I think as you expand, you, uh, opportunities arise in terms of disaggregation. And so whereas uh, at some point you had a single entity that was looking for information, now you had multiple entities that are looking for information and trying to understand where do they plug in into these uh, really vibrant business models. Uh, and uh, tap into it. So you had a distributor trying to understand the business model, but not try and trying to just understand how they fit in with the distribution structure and not the financing one. You had software providers trying to understand what, what is the digital financial landscape in uh, specific countries, but not perhaps looking much at a distributor. So I think the fact that you had this emerging constituents also put a greater emphasis uh, in terms of just understanding um, the markets a bit better. 
And above all, I think um, we hold the view that this is a really interesting business model. It's transformative, it's disruptive, it's opening up new markets, it's addressed challenges that consumers were, were previously having, and the supply chain too. And it's important for us, we thought it's important for us to try and see how then can we facilitate a, um, a, an index that provides this information to those disaggregated audiences or to the respective constituents. And that's how we came with the, with the PIM Go Market Attractiveness Index in 2018. And so we had the first version in 2018. And then quickly everybody came back and said, yeah, this only covers 14 countries, why don't you expand this? And so we expanded it by another 10 countries. And this time around, again, there was a, there was a plea that uh, we should perhaps include some countries in Asia, and we also included a couple of countries in Asia. So it's a 24, it's a, it's a 24 country index. At the same time, we looked at, um, at the indicators that we have. It's a 70 point indicator framework that covers uh, three distinct areas, demand, supply, and enabling environment. And Ed will get a chance of, um, of elaborating on this. But this was an attempt to be able to now to, to have a very broad based structure upon which now companies can evaluate the markets. Uh, and um, what we've also done is that uh, things keep on changing. So what we've decided again, we'll be updating it on an annual basis. We've also uh, expanded the sources where we're getting the information from. Getting information from, um, from um, at a country level is difficult. We struggle with, uh, with some countries and uh, and Ned will point out some of those countries where we struggled in the formation. We could be able to get some really good demand factor indicators, get some good sources on supply, but perhaps not too much on the enabling environment. But we still thought it's important for us to be able to present this data. And I think in those countries where we were not able to get all the data along the 70 point indicators, Ed will be able to outline how we've gone about this. And so uh, that's where we are today. We'll be updating it on an annual basis. Uh, information keeps on changing, it's vibrant, and uh, our hope is that uh, this will become a tool that can inform your market entry decisions. What it doesn't do, yeah, which is an important aspect to highlight, is that we, we are providing a very high level macro uh, analysis, yeah, and to some extent also a, a detailed uh, analysis of the demand, sec the demand and supply chains. What we haven't done, is taking a detailed market research at uh, supply chains on the ground. And so we expect that companies will, will use this information for the macro level decisions in terms of market entry. It's a compass pointing in the line, direction of travel. We anticipate that you still need to do a lot of market research in terms of just understanding the routes to market, understanding unit econo uh, economics, understanding the, the various distribution partners that you can leverage upon. So I think this is just one constituent of, um, of the market research that uh, you need to undertake at, uh, at, a, at a country level. What I think also became interesting as we we're doing this is that uh, from the very onset, we knew that there's some countries that have um, some challenges. And so we thought that this tool will also be a good tool to engage with the government and development partners who are looking at changing some of the policies that need to, to be changed in order to be able to make this market attractive. Uh, policy, as you know, takes time, yeah? So there are some policies that I think uh, maybe can be turned around in a reasonably quick period of time, especially maybe the ones that relate to duty and VAT tariffs, but some more enduring ones that are touching on digital finance platforms that integrate with mobile money at a country level and attracting uh, fiscal uh, measures from the government. So, but this we hope will be a platform that we can start engaging with the governments more closely and uh, with development partners to turn this around. Now, any reference to country ranking here is incidental. Yeah? So we did not set out to rank countries in terms of how attractive they are for Pego. There's some charts that lend themselves to it, but I think our idea was not that uh, this lends itself to the fact that just like what IFC does in the doing, uh, uh, doing business report where they really target at, at ranking countries and they have these subsequent reports that talk about a country moving from number 24 to number, to number 17. And this wasn't our intention. Yeah, and so I think, uh, as I said, it's incidental. Uh, we hope that it's not used in terms of just publications that will go out there in terms of lighting global ranking countries in terms of their attractiveness to pay go, but we hope that you'll be able to use it for your final details and planning. So let me take a pause at that and uh, then hand over to Ed and Caroline, who've done an amazing job at trying to pull together 70 indicators across these um, three nodes that we've talked about across 24 countries, not easy. But at the same time, I think they've done a really wonderful job. Now, the thing to note here is that this is a briefing document in case you're using it and you can kind of 
come across something that doesn't sit quite well with you, let us know. Uh, because I think it uh, things keep on changing all the time. So over to you, uh, Ed and uh, Caroline. Thank you very much, Atosha, for, for that excellent introduction. And, and, and I think I will be at risk of repeating a couple of the key messages, but that, that's also saved us a lot of time in, 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 in I think, really clearly articulating what the objectives of, of this tool are. Um, hopefully now everyone's got a, a view of um, a short PowerPoint that Caroline and I will run through that will first set out um, what the index covers in terms of the, the 70 point indicators that Atosha has mentioned. Um, and then we'll, 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 we'll go a bit back and forth between um, what results the index generates, but also how to interpret those results and how to use the index. Um, Caroline and I will hand backwards and forwards. I should also say um, a big thank you to Jake Wellman and Anita Hafner, who complete the Vivid team um, and have been excellent on, 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 in delivering this project uh, in the 2019 update. Just briefly on this slide, I think this will all um, uh, support and reiterate much of what Atosha has said. Um, the, the index now covers 24 countries, um, and as you see, what, what you see on the right panel of the uh, of the slide is um, what the main dashboard of, of the of the index looks like. Um, and as uh, Itosha said, that that obviously does provide a a, a display of countries ranked um, according to their score on the index. Um, a theme that will come come up a few times is, is is a word of caution on interpreting that we we are not saying that you know. Um, Indonesia is the most attractive country for PAYGO in the next 10 years. Um, and we're certainly not saying that, you know, um, Mozambique or Sierra Leone or, or, or Cote d'Ivoire uh, are, are not attractive markets for, 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 for the PAYGO business model. Um, I think what we are saying is, and what the, how this index should be used is, there are uh, opportunities in uh, across all of these countries, depending on which indicators or which attributes you're most interested in, um, that that will look different from one country to another. Um, and what this index allows you to do is to quite interactively have a look through the attributes that sort of uh, characterize uh, or define the payday markets um, and identify the particular strengths from one country to another, but also to identify where there might be challenges and where, where the business model or the policy environment might need to be improved or tailored um, um, to, to fully unlock the potential of that market. I think where, where this ends up is, um, and we've got a link on, on, on this slide, is um, an Excel interface that is um, publicly available for everybody to use um, that, will, that has a number of displays, including um, a couple of tabs where you can look in detail at a specific country, um, or if you're interested in how countries compare across a specific indicator or set of indicators, that there's a number of ways to view this, this index that have been pre-built into the design. Um, I'll just spend about another five minutes on on how the index works, uh, and then I'll hand over to Caroline to to present some of the some of the initial findings and also um, an application of the index to a specific country example and how it can be supported by by further analysis. So this slide, which is um, apologetically or unapologetically dense in information is, is, is what you'll look at in, in the main display of the index. I'll just talk through between this slide and the next slide how, how this all works, um, which hopefully makes it a bit easier. If you're picking up this index tomorrow, you'll, you'll know where to start and, and how to use this. So at the top uh, left of your screen, you can see uh, a pillar display selection and a country highlight. Um, essentially anything you look at in this index that has a, a yellow background and an orange text um, is something that the user can edit and, and change. Um, what we see here is we're looking at the overall score um, aggregated across all of the indicators in the index and just pulling out uh, Uganda as a country example. So what you see is Uganda sits fifth on the overall scores of the index um, and scores 86 out of 100. Um, I'll come on to what that means in, in just a second. Um, but before I do that, what I think I want to do is I'll move ahead a slide and then come back to this. Um, some of this might be familiar for those of you who, who, who have been working with the 2018 index. Um, as Atosha said, we have three pillars, the demand side, the supply side, and the enabling environment. Um, and all of our, each of our 70 indicators are housed within each of those three pillars. As you can see on this slide, within each pillar, there are then a number of sub pillars, 10 in total, um, three in the demand side, four under the supply side and three under the enabling environment. Um, and I guess just to, without dwelling on, on, on the maths behind this, what, what we have to do to turn the 70 indicators 
um, into an overall index score is go through a process of aggregation and weighting. Um, initially, we take the indicators uh, into a subpillar. So for example, um, we have, I think, 11 indicators capturing the market size on the demand pillar. Um, they are then aggregated into a score for market size between zero and 100. Um, the same happens for ability to pay and willingness to pay. Um, and then each of the other respective sub pillars under supply and enabling environments that you can see on the slide. Um, those are then aggregated into a score between zero and 100 at pillar level. So each country scores um, zero or 100 on the demands pillar, the supply pillar and the enabling environment pillar. Um, and those three scores for each of the, the main pillars are again then aggregated to, to, to generate a score um, across the index as a whole. Um, again, between zero and 100, with 100 being the, the sort of best performing country and all the others ranked relative to that score. So having said that on this slide, I, I just want to go back to the previous slide and say, when you're looking at how the countries rank, and this, this picks up Atosha's point on, um, this not being a prescriptive or prognostic tool, um, the, the results um, that you see presented on the overall score are a entirely a function of how you weight the individual pillars and sub pillars. Um, so as you can see um, with the blue arrows and, and, and the blue box on the right hand side of the screen, um, the uh, sub pillars and pillars are each assigned a weight. Um, we've embedded weights within the tool that we think provide a good starting point and are relatively representative of, of market conditions as we see today. However, they uh, may not be the best representation of markets in the future. Um, and they may not be uh, what, what you're particularly interested in. So if you're a company who knows that actually you think you've identified your, 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 your market in, 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 in Uganda, for example, uh, you, you've surveyed your customers and you're convinced that that market does exist, at least on the demand side, then perhaps the demand uh, pillar of the index is not what's of interest to you. In that case, you could go into the index redefine the weight so that you put zero weight on the demand score and put 50% on the supply side and 50% on the enabling environment, for example. Um, so that's how the tool is intended to be used as a, as a very flexible dynamic tool, um, which helps you draw out the information that you're most interested in. Um, I think, you know, if you're looking at uh, one country compared to another, um, each of the pillars is, is of a relatively, relatively different level of importance. Um, hence the reason that we don't, we don't want to see this as a, as a prescriptive tool comparing countries um, uh, and, and ranking them as, uh, by, you know, by definition, more or less attractive. I think at that point, I will um, shortly hand over to Caroline. Um, <coughs> What we've done in the 2019 edition is supplement the uh, index working itself and the, and the results presented in the index with some qualitative and quantitative supporting research um, uh, for, for Nigeria in particular. Um, and this is the sort of thing that we think um, it, it provides a good example of an application of the tool. Um, so the tool itself takes you, takes you so far and then, and, and then there's a, a number of steps to, to deepen that analysis, um, which, which the tool and the index um, supports. Um, but doesn't doesn't go far enough on its own. So, um, Caroline, I think I'll hand over to you for the for, for the next few slides. Sure. Thanks, Ed. Um, so, as Ed said, um, when, for instance, Nigeria is, uh, is is ranks more or less average on the overall score in the tool. Uh, what makes it interesting um, is that it is a quite a large market. And there are, it's also an increasingly popular market for off-grid off players. So um, that's why we've we've taken this as an example to as uh, how you can apply the tool and also take a, a closer look at specific markets. So um, what we did for Nigeria is that we also explored market trends and business models in the, in the Pago markets, um, but I'm taking a look at the, the use of Pago technologies to serve markets. Um, that currently have an unreliable grid connection uh, or no grid connection at all. Um, and we also explored possible partnerships that, that are currently in place under current regulations, but also uh, recommendations for how these can, um, can be uh, supported, supportive uh, to increase the, the PAYGO market in the future uh, in, the, in, in, in the Nigeria. If you could, yeah, exactly. Thanks, Ed. Um, so one of the tool outputs is um, is a heat map, which 
basically shows um, how all of the different countries score on the different pillars. Um, it's important to, to, um, to mention that the, the colors are, um, uh, are, can be set um, and users can also change these, um, the ranges for the, the categorization of red, amber and green. Um, or in this case, red, light green, and green, sorry. Um, and what it basically does is that it gives you an overview of um, how do the countries rank relatively to each other, but it also uh, shows that uh, although a country uh, can rank uh, very high on the overall index, for, in for example, Indonesia, uh, who, scores, uh, who scores very high on the overall index, it still, um, it is possible that um, actually, on the overall, um, for the different pillars, another country scores higher. In this case, Kenya, who scores high across all three pillars, even though they don't score um, the highest, don't have the highest ranking score uh, in the overall um, index. And uh, what we can see here is that, in particular, um, some Asian markets that have been added to the to the PEGO index uh, in this version. Um, they, they score quite high, um, mostly as a result of supply and enabling environments that are uh, particularly conducive for, um, for PEGO, for the PEGO business model. Um, for instance, in Indonesia, India, but also in Myanmar um, and Pakistan, who, who score high on them across more or less uh, uh, all three pillars, and in particular supply and enabling environments. Um, as Itosha also said, um, the enabling environments pillar is, is, is of particular interest for uh, policymakers looking to, um, to identify gaps or other um, uh, factors that might be conducive to, um, to creating a, an enabling part, um, policy environment. Um, and it's also interesting to see how some countries uh, are particularly well suited in terms of policy. Thank you. So again, taking Nigeria as an example, um, it might be interesting to, to, um, to take a, a deep dive into, um, into uh, the, the pillars and how they are built up. As you can see, Nigeria scores particularly high on, on the demand uh, pillar. And this is mostly a result of a, of a, a high level of, of, of grid uh, unreliability. And also, um, obviously, Nigeria is also um, large in terms of absolute terms, uh, with nearly 200 million people. And um, at this moment, just 40% of the, the population is connected to the main grid, which means um, the, the, the potential market is, is quite large. Um, also, Nigerians um, have re relatively high income, have a relatively high proportion of high income customers who currently spend um, quite um, a, sh a share of their income on, on lighting and mobile phone charging using uh, other sources at the moment, um, which can obviously be uh, reallocated to, um, to solar energy and uh, using the PECO business model. So that is why Nigeria scores particularly high on that pillar. Um, while on the other pillars, they score um, more or less average. And um, as you can see, it's, the, the pillars are built up out of uh, out of uh, several sub pillars, uh, sub indicators. Sorry, um, and you can see how they score relatively to each other. I'll just go on a little bit more quickly now. Yes. So um, taking a step backwards, um, we have there are some findings that we can see across the index, index countries. Um, what we have seen uh, compared to the 2018 is that uh, in, in, in both in absolute and in relative terms, um, PAYGO sales and the use of mobile money technologies are growing across, across all countries. Um, and the early adopters, uh, the, the East, mostly the East African countries, are deepening their markets, um, most notably Kenya, who, whose mobile money penetration has now grown to 37% of the population. Which is obviously very conducive to them to using this business model. Um, in Asia, it's, it's uh, the, the 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 situation is quite different from Africa, um, which was interesting to obviously to note, um, but also shows up in the in the in the index results. Um, 
where microcredits and credit bureaus uh, are much more prevalent and are therefore also providing a, a route to markets for potential paygo customers. So what we've seen in, for instance, in Myanmar is that the, the, there were, were actually relatively modest paygo sales in 2017, uh, which has grown explosively um, now in 2018, uh, with um, um, even, even without, there was previously some government uh, support, government procurement of a lot of the, the, of the, of the of great solar technologies. And, and even now, uh, while that, uh, when that uh, support has, um, or the, the, the procurement has, um, has, uh, has been reduced, the, the PAYGO market is still stable um, and um, expected to grow further. Um, as I've already said, for Pakistan, uh, it was an interesting result is, is that it has a relatively high score for access to finance for businesses um, and also already has significant amounts of installed solar capacity um, while also um, having very uh, conducive operational configuration in place for PECO solar power generation. Um, well, actually, at this moment, the, the market penetration of PAYGO, the PAYGO is model, is relatively uh, low. Um, well, this and, and this, um, this the result of this is that it has a quite high uh, ranked supply pillar score uh, for Pakistan, um, even though the current penetration is is low. So that is so that is one of the the ways uh, you can use the the index to more or less zoom in and. And, and look at the, um, how the, the high the, the score is built up uh, in the uh, from the from the underlying indicators that you're particularly interested in. I'm handing over to Ed uh, for some more um, insight on the on the sub pillars. Thanks, Caroline. And <laughs> sorry if I if I if I rushed ahead on, on that last slide uh, a bit prematurely. Um, I think what I'll do, we'll, we'll cover how each of the pillars now look in, 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 a, in a bit of detail. And just picking up where Caroline left off, pa Pakistan is, is, is one of the really interesting countries in the index. And, and I think both shows um, the strengths and some of the caveats to, to how to interpret the, the index. And actually, we'll come back to Pakistan uh, looking at the demand pillar in a second. Um, I guess it, it, what the index does here is show some really interesting and attractive parts of, of a country like Pakistan's markets. Um, what it doesn't do is, is have any thresholds or highlight any binding constraints to the growth of that market, um, which I think really signifies how, how the index you know, should be interpreted and should be used. Um, it does help identify what, what the attractive elements are, and, and Caroline's spoken to some of those. Um, and then I think you know, the question is, why are we seeing such low penetration, given that actually a lot of the conditions that you, you'd, you'd want to be in place for, for the PAYGO market are there? Um, and just to conclude, I guess on, on the Nigeria point, Niger the Nigerian market has grown very differently to um, the East African market. Um, and so again, there's um, some of that you, you can see through the indicators in the index that look very similar to, to what we've seen in East Africa in terms of ability and willingness to pay, but then there's been a, a very different partnership model to, to, to grow that business. Um, in particular, working with banks and microfinance institutions and, and, and telecoms operators um, through, through partnership rather than directly providing a, a pay-go enabled technology. Um, Great. Uh, I will try to accelerate a bit here. So th th there are three slides coming up um, presenting each of the pillars in turn. First, the demand pillar, then the supply pillar, and then the enabling environment pillar. W what I suggest I'll do is spend a bit of time talking through this first demand pillar, um, and then uh, I'll leave the supply pillar and the enabling environment um, um, a, a little bit uh, quicker um, and hopefully the slides can be shared so that, so that those are there and they're also presented in, in, in the report on the on, on the Lighting Global website. Um, what, what I do want to, to spend a bit of time on, on this demand pillar is um, looking at one of the interesting findings which is uh, Pakistan uh, under, the, under the weights we have in the index uh, receives the highest score uh, uh, across the 24 countries in the index and um, quite closely followed by uh, Kenya and Uganda. Um, I guess there's then a bit of a dip actually and then a lot of countries performing in the mid-range between sort of high 50s and, and low 70s um, and then just a couple of countries at the tail end which, which look like either smaller markets or markets where um, consumers would be less able to, to, to pay for, for, for the PAYGO product um, or might have less demand because they're, they're already getting access through, through a different solution. Um, 
in terms of how this result is generated and, and to give the Pakistan example, um, what's interesting is that across the market size ability to pay and willingness to pay sub pillars that make up this demand pillar, Pakistan is actually not the highest score on any one of those three. However, it does perform relatively well across all three of those sub pillars. And so once you add them up and weight them relatively equally, um, Pakistan come, comes out as, 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 this, as, as the highest performer, if you like. Um, part of the reason for that is on, in terms of market size, Pakistan both has um, quite densely populated pockets of population that might be attractive for a pay-go distribution model. Um, it also has a relatively unreliable national grid. So even in peri-urban or urban areas, um, the role of, of off-grid solar and, and, and sort of larger systems purchased under a PAYGO model um, it, it might still be quite attractive actually to, to peri-urban and urban consumers. Um, and it's also obviously a very large market in absolute terms. Um, so there's a large customer base there, um, <coughs> quite densely populated in pockets that are accessible through, through a distribution network. Um, uh, and the alternative supplies, either the grid or others, are, are not particularly attractive at the moment. Um, it's also a country where um, expenditure on kerosene and alternative uh, um, lighting and heating products is, is quite high. And so were there to be a, a viable a, a, a pay-go business model, it, it might be quite attractive. Um, I, I, I think I'll, I'll stop there. The rest, of, the rest of this slide is relatively self-explanatory, but um, I hope that was helpful in terms of how how you get a country result at the, at the top end of the pillar um, and if not i guess i'll see lots of questions in, in the q a quite soon um right on the supply side um rather unsurprisingly we, we, we have kenya um appearing towards the top end of the pillar um this this uh, shouldn't be a shock in that kenya has obviously grown uh, a very large pay-go market um, it has good, relatively good rural access. It has an existing set of suppliers um, and a large product penetration. Um, I guess this, this, this makes Kenya a, a very attractive market in terms of supply conditions. Whether or not that means it's the best market for a new entrant to go to, to is another question, um, given that it is already um, quite concentrated. Um, but that's, that's um, what, what, what we're seeing in this uh, supply pillar. Um, and then I think in, in Cote d'Ivoire, Togan, Sierra Leone, there, there, there are some challenges to, on the supply side, in particular around um, some of the enabling environments, but also access to finance for, for firms, um, where this is identified as, as one of the, the uh, major constraints to, to, to growing a small business. On the enabling environment, and, and this is getting close to finishing off for us now and ready to move to the Q&A, um, I think it's quite interesting. There's there's a very wide dispersion of the scores of the countries, um, so so very unlike the demand side and also unlike the supply side to a certain extent. What we see here is that the, the, there is a very wide range of performance. There isn't a cluster of countries at the top or at the bottom. Um, there's quite a stage of, of countries at different um, um, different steps or stages of of of, of having a, a very attractive uh, enabling environment. Um, the, the kind of indicators that we've got in here, which which are generating these results, are um, access to, to mobile broadband coverage and to, to mobile phone technologies or, or internet. Um, the reason for that is at the, certainly uh, to date a, a major driver of the pay-go market is um, being able to enable uh, payment through mobile phones. Um, it also has more general macroeconomic conditions um, such as um, a score on, on doing business, um, on enforcing contracts and on legal rights. Um, which is largely a, a sort of capturing the, the, the fact that most PAYGO, PAYGO businesses are international um, and being able to operate in, a, in, a, in an international business environment is important for PAYGO companies. Um, so hopefully that has uh, uh, provided an introduction to how the tool works and, and, and what kind of uh, insights it might be generating. I think a few a few things have changed in particular since the 2018 and 2019 index and we'll just conclude with a few of those. Um, I guess while the sort of share of population in rural areas may be falling in absolute terms, rural populations are are large and at least until recently have been increasing. So the, the, you know, is this market still going to be around in, in a few years? Um, you know, at least on the rural side, that, that seems uh, like a market that isn't about to disappear. Um, they're not all about to, 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 to become electrified through grid programs. So there is obviously still a role of trying to work out how we can best make use of the PAYGO um, pay products. Um, 
I think a, a particular focus on the 2019 uh, uh, index and some of the supporting analysis we've done around it um, is, is thinking through the role of, of the PAYGO business model um, in peri-urban or urban areas where there may be a, a good connection nearby, but it's not um, it's not of uh, you know not sufficiently high quality to um, unlock all of the uses both for household and for households and for productive use. Um, so that's been a really interesting development, especially looking at Nigeria and Pakistan, which um, in the 2019 index score, score very well on the demand side because of that um, large, uh, unreliable grid population. Um, and then finally, I think the, the access to and use of mobile money is, is increasing across uh, all the countries in, in our sample, but, but not at the same rate, um, and is of a, a different level of importance, I guess, in, in some countries compared to others. Um, so again, in India, um, the use of mobile money to, 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 to pay for um, energy products is, is still relatively limited, um, uh, although that could help drive the market if the pay-go model was, was to become more, um, more widely used in, in a place like India. I think I will conclude there. Um, Kamiria, I'm not sure if better to hand back to you for, for, for Q&A um, or, or how we dive back into those, or, or, or if Atosha has any, any comments at this stage, um, obviously happen to get those. Right, maybe, thanks Ed. Just, just two comments from my part, yeah, and I think uh, maybe just going back to the statistics that we had in Kenya in regards to mobile phone penetration of 37%, just a clarification to the audience that that 37 percent relates to the people that are making regular payment for utilities so that's 37 percent it doesn't represent the mobile payment as we define it in terms of just the mpesa that people know because that's kind of approaching 80 percent but i think um, the 37 percent here was just the ones that are using it for things just transcends pago i mean transcends mpesa but using it to pay utilities so that, might, that might be water that might be uh, that might be the power that they use, and uh, that might be also be just regular payments that they're having to the bank through that platform. So that's a clarification on that. And then to your last point in regards to the market, uh, the off-grid market. I think what I like about this tool is that uh, it goes beyond just off-grid because you can imagine now uh, the next frontier for the people on this call is uh, agriculture in terms of solar water pumping, cold chains, uh, agri-processing. So the only thing that would change here is the, just the demand pillar. Yeah? So, and then they'll have uh, maybe tweak a bit on, uh, on some activities on the supply and enabling environment. So I think the flexibility of this tool, I think uh, applies to the business model and then to the, to the particular off-grid market. So I think that's the only thing I wanted to say that uh, the, the utility of this model, I think um, goes much, uh, much broader than this. And then the last one, I think, and you alluded to it a couple of times, Ed, is that that we did a deep dive on Nigeria and India as two really huge markets that I think everybody wanted to get a deeper flavor of what, uh, what, what is this exactly because this the results that we have here on Excel yeah so you go to the Excel tool you have all these um, uh, uh, scroll down menus that you play around with it pops out numbers for you but what do these numbers really mean yeah so uh, I think for the for the sake of the audience we've done a deep dive on Nigeria and India as, as case studies uh, maybe about 10 page reports that will be coming out uh, in this um, in this month so look out for that uh, we'll post that on our website but um, i think uh, it, it begs the question huge markets as you've said and then uh, yeah give, getting a bit more flavor on what those numbers are so that's it ed thanks Thanks, Atosha, for, for the clarification. Kamira, do you want to guide us through the Q&A session? Absolutely. Let me just take over the slides here. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm just going to thank all of you guys um, for an outstanding presentation. And as we shift over to the Q&A session, I would like to rem remind our attendees to please submit any questions using the question pane at any time. Um, we will also be keeping up several links on the screen throughout um, for a quick reference that point to where you can find more information about upcoming and previously held webinars and how to take advantage of the Ask an Expert program. Uh, did you want, um, Ed, did you want to um, answer or expand on Etotia's um, question about expanding on the Excel template and how that works? Oh, yes, yes, happy to. Um, so I think the the Excel template, um, maybe I can, it might help if I reshare my screen and can show how it works, actually. Absolutely. Um, Give me one possible? second. Yeah. 
Okay, so ho hopefully everyone can see a, um, an Excel file. It's probably rather small, depending on, 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 on what screen you're looking at it. Um, what we've got here is, is a version of the Excel tool itself. Um, and I think I, I can briefly show some, some of the functionality of this. Um, there, there is an introduction and a, 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 a sort of structure tab to look at first, but I'll, I'll just show how, how the tool works um, in terms of using the results. Um, so as I, as I sort of described at the, at the top here, and hopefully you can see me now changing this, um, the, the default is to, to look at the overall score and, and, and select a country to highlight. However, on this first tab, what you can do is change your selection across the um, different uh, three main pillars of the tool. Um, so again, if, you, if you're looking at this and thinking, well, actually, I, I've got the demand side worked out, but I really want to know more about the enabling environments um, across the countries, because I don't really know, you know where, where, which countries are, uh, are relatively more attractive, more, more, more challenging, then you can select the enabling environments here. And similarly, if you just want to pull out a country highlight, you, you can do that as well using, using the next drop down. Um, so most of, most of the uh, Excel tool works through, through drop down menus. Um, Probably the important bit here actually is, 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 is just to show how the weights work. So as I've said, we, we have already coded in um, weights, which we obviously need to, to generate a result. Um, to, to take that thought experiment through to its completion, if we wanted to set the demand side to zero, because we, uh, we think we already know all about that, then we can go into the drop down, set that down to zero. We'll then get a warning from the tool to remind us that um, uh, we've currently got weights of zero on the demand, 50 on the supply and 30 on the enabling environment. So those don't currently add up um, to 100%. Uh, but if we then reset the enabling environment score, um, as hopefully you can see me doing, to 50%, we've now got a, 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 a sort of reweighted index um, uh, and it should reorder the countries automatically. Hopefully it's done that. Let me just see if. Uh, set this to 100%. Mm, it does, uh, apologies, that's not showing uh, through on the graph in the middle of the screen, but it should it should be changing those lives. So we'll check. That might be a problem with the version on my desktop. Um, you can then always reset the weights back to the default selection um, using the button at the top. So you can always recover um, the original version of the tool. Okay, um, in terms of how the rest of the tool works, there's then a series of output tabs, which um, I saw there was a question on Myanmar, so I was looking at uh, the Myanmar result here just, uh, just before we got into the Q&A. Um, so you can select which country you want to look at and it, and it will display all of the indicators uh, in the index. Um, in the case of Myanmar, it's an interesting one and, and worth showing that um, where we don't have data, um, those are displayed at the bottom of the respective pillar um, with, with a grayed out uh, uh, bar color. And so those are indicators where we don't have data for that particular indicator for that country. Um, and what we do is we replace missing data with a score that will preserve the overall score of that country for the indicators where it does have data. Um, so no, it's not punitive for countries that have less data, but we have to be clear that some of those are um, uh, are, are, are not real data points. Um, so for example, in Myanmar, we don't have data on um, the affordability of financial services or the availability of early stage equity. Um, for the rest, and I, and I won't go through these, there's then a series of tabs um, that, show, that give you a, a bit more information and, and some more selections per country or per indicator. Um, so if you want to look at a, a, at a single indicator, this indicator tab you hopefully now see um, will let you look at, um, as we're showing now, the uh, indicator for unreliable grid connections. And it will show you both the normalized score um, and also the raw data for that score. Um, so actually, yeah, I guess that, that, that probably is worth saying that in this tool, there are obviously data points for, for example, population size, um, which are then turned into a score between zero and 100. You can find the, the, the raw data scores as well, because at, at an indicator level, those are, those are more informative than the, than the normalized scores. Um, hopefully that helped answer the, the question from, from Atosha. Um, and thanks Atosha for the clarification on, 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 on mobile money use in Kenya as well. I'll, I'll hand back to you, Kamiria, for, for, for Q&A, if that's okay. Perfect, absolutely. Let me take back control here. All right, awesome. So we do have a question, um, it is, uh, could you help us understand better um, how the willingness to pay under the demand pillar was appraised? 
Yes, absolutely. So I think this was a question um, related specifically to Myanmar, but the answer uh, would apply equally to, to any of the countries in the index. Um, so, so willingness to pay is a, is a combination of, um, uh, let me just check this, about 10 indicators, um, which we are drawing on the same data sources across countries. Um, so I guess a, a part of this index is that it is using data which is comparable and allows us to compare one country to another. Um, so lots of this is, is, is from publicly available sources um, rather than a, than a specific country assessment. Um, to, to, to guide you through exactly what's in there, there is um, willingness to pay part determined both by willingness to pay for the technology product, the off-grid solar product, but also um, familiarity with the credit side of the product. Um, so customers that are, that are more used to, to purchasing uh, on credit or using mobile money um, are more likely to be willing to pay for a, for a, for a paygo solution. Um, so what we have in here is um, uh, whether or not uh, the, per the proportion of people that are already buying from a store uh, on credits, um, which is a, one of those indicators capturing um, familiarity with, with, with credit products. There's the cost of subsistence electricity consumption um, in, in each country, which gives an idea of um, what the sort of alternative to a paygo uh, uh, product is in terms of the minimum you're paying to get a subsistence level of electricity. Um, and, and, you know, the more, the more you're paying, the more attractive uh, an alternative uh, paygo solution might be. And then there's some stuff around alternative energy uses, such as the amount of time it takes to get connected to the grid, uh, average prices of kerosene as an alternative, um, and then uh, the, the cost to get electricity uh, as a proportion of income um, from alternative sources. And then a series of, of indicators on, uh, on, on, on private credit bureau coverage, um, how many people are, are using a mobile money account, um, and how many people are, are, are paying utility bills using a mobile phone. Um, and so, so it captures a range of indicators across both um, technology usage and uh, um, uh, familiarity with credit. Um, I don't think that entirely answers um, why Myanmar gets to the score that it does, but, I, but, I, but I'm not sure I'd be able to answer that question without um, uh, 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 looking in, in, in a bit more detail at the Myanmar context. Maybe just to add a bit on that, uh, Ed, and I think maybe just in general terms, so yeah, this the, the Excel worksheet is uh, is pretty compact, pretty dense, and so what we've done is that we've also developed a user guide that uh, defines all the um, indicators that are to use, but at the same time it also provides the indices, the sub indices that we have used. So I think uh, in regards to uh, just providing a bit more insight into those indicators, how we've applied them, and the indices that reside under that, so that's available. So just in case anybody are, takes a click at this and then looks as if this is really dense information, we've tried to provide a guide that provides information as to how we've gone about this. And it's online. Perfect. Thanks, Thank you. Actually, in case people are looking for it and don't find it, it's, I think there, there might be a separate version online, but it's certainly in the annex to the report that accompanies the index online. Um, so that's, you'll definitely be able to find it there. Awesome. Just a quick question. I know so the report, the index shows the score for each of these countries. Does the report also um, showcase how they can improve their score for perhaps the next um, uh, index you guys might do in the future? Uh, Itosha, I'm happy to respond to that unless you want to, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think um, that's what we really wanted to do. We've done the deep dive in um, in Nigeria and uh, India because I think the challenge that we faced, yeah, we, we initially contemplated this, but uh, given the fact that uh, you're looking across really so many uh, points across here, uh, especially on the enabling environment, it wasn't really possible to do that at this particular time. But yes, I think um, in terms of how we'd like to take this forward is that, uh, to begin having some discussions with them, especially with development partners that are based in some of these countries that we have covered, uh, outline what are some of the challenges that we've seen, and hopefully then they might be able to take over and uh, address some of those policy changes. So I think um, uh, we were not able to do it at this particular time. Going forward, I think we've only covered two. Uh, again, I think we will remain open in case there are any other requests to cover any other additional countries that people may have, uh, just based on the priorities that may emerge. But I think the pathway that we had taken is one of just uh, having an active component of reaching out to development partners on this. And so it, it's still, yeah, wide open for us. 
maybe just to add to to Atosha, it's comments. I, I completely agree, and I, I think what 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 the index has is a, is a very dense set of information. Um, so for the two country focused studies we've already developed, we, we do um, have, uh, come to some policy recommendations. And um, but it's also aimed at the index itself is also aimed at developers themselves and investors. Um, so, so so I think there's a it's got a sort of multi use design in terms of the way the index works and then and then supports quite detailed analysis on top of that um, and it, you know it, for, for, for those listening and it, it would be great to get a reaction um, and uh, it, you know after the webinar I'll get some feedback on on what are the most useful and most interesting parts of the index so that we can make sure it stays dynamic and and stays as relevant as possible to to, to the questions you're, you're seeking to answer be that on the policy side or on the development of a business model in, a, in, in particular countries. Awesome. Well, it looks like those were all of the questions that we had. Uh, so, I, like I said, I just wanted you guys to thank you so much for taking the time and giving that awesome presentation and that very informative Q&A session. Um, but at this time, I did want to provide you guys with the opportunity to um, have any additional or closing remarks that you would like to say before we would close the webinar. So thanks, uh, Camilia. So uh, on our part as Lighting Global is that um, uh, whenever we develop these tools, um, our intention is that uh, people get a chance of using them. Uh, and again, uh, we are an ongoing program and so we welcome any feedback or any discussions that uh, any, yeah, any whichever party would like to reach out to us, whether a distributor, an importer, a designer, a financial intermediary, and just have deeper discussion in regards to what this means. And uh, if anybody is looking at exploring a particular country that they would like to uh, enter into, then we welcome that discussion. So we hope that this is a useful tool, at least in uh, in taking the initial discussions of uh, go, no go, in regards to just uh, companies targeting and expanding into additional markets. And thanks for hosting us, uh, Camila. Of course, my pleasure. Anybody else have any closing remarks? I, I think from my side and from the Vivid team, I, I would absolutely repeat what Atosha said. And um, thanks also to you and uh, for giving us the chance to talk this through and uh, and get it out in the public domain. Uh, it would be super to get to get feedback, um, uh, which I which I think will go through through Atosha and his team. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been um, a very interesting journey developing the index, and I, and I hope I hope it will be useful for. Uh, a range of applications for, for for the people listening in as well awesome thank you so much well on behalf of the clean energy solutions center i'd like to extend a thank you to all of our exec panelists and to our attendees for participating in today's webinar we very much appreciate your time and hope in return that you, uh, there are some valuable insights that you can take back to your ministries departments or organizations we also invite you to inform your colleagues and those in your networks about Solution Center resources and services, including no cost policy support through our Ask and Expert service. I invite you to check the Solution Center website if you would like to view the slides and listen to a recording of today's presentation, as well as previously held webinars. Additionally, you will find information on upcoming webinars and other training events. We are also now posting webinar recordings to the Clean Energy Solutions Center YouTube channel but please allow for one week for the audio recording to be posted. Finally, I would, likely, I would likely to kindly ask you to take a moment to complete the short survey that will appear when we conclude the webinar. Please enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you again at a future Clean Energy Solutions Center event. This concludes our webinar. <laughs>